Hey everybody, I've been getting a ton of questions on the lead time 24 volt all in one. So I'm gonna do the same test as I did on my inverter video, but the short answer is you probably should buy this. This is an incredible deal. I haven't talked about it recently because it sold out, but I found out it's back in stock and on sale. I've got discount codes. It's under 500 bucks, but you probably should buy this. High points, 3000 watt inverter with a peak of 9000 watts. It has a 60 amp MPPT charge controller in it, which is about 1600 watts. Uh, input voltage is 30 to 150 volts. Now this is a little nebulous. They recommend that you top out at 105, but its actual limit is 150. So that's three, 37 volt panels should kind of hit in the middle ground because you never get full capacity anyway. So max limit is 150 volts, max recommended is 105. And it has a 50 amp AC charger built into it. I'll show you the terminals in a little while, but let's do its standby draw and its efficiency test. Let's go. Okay, got my shunt plugged in. The unit is, is wired, but not turned on zero amps, which is what we would presume. Uh, now I've booted it up, 22 watts. So 0.8 amps at 26 volts is the standby current, 22 watts, confirmed. We're at 890 watts on the AC side and 990 on the DC side. Okay, starting from the left, master power switch, AC input breaker. We've got screw terminals for the AC input from the wall, AC output to go to uh, your breaker panel or power strip or whatever, PV input. So we've got range markings here. <laughs> And then here's your battery connections. You take this little cover plate off and then get your screwdriver and we go down inside. And I'll show you the terminals in just a second. Off to the side, we've got data communications and we also have dry contact, normally open, normally closed, to trigger an auto start generator. It is configurable uh, and programmable to kick on and off whenever it is that you want. Here's the inside of the terminals. and the battery terminals. We also have an integrated fuse over here off to the side, which is nice. This is a four gauge wire that I was actually able to cram all the way inside here, but we've got a little accessory bag. So it's a pretty nice goodie bag. We've got a, a wall mollies. We've got brackets for the bottom. We got a spare 150 amp fuse. We got these Big ferrules, these are supposed to be for a two gauge. We'll try that out on the next build. So these go in here. We've got heat shrink tubing for the ferrules. We've got ferrules for the AC input so you can stick heavy gauge wire into the AC in and out. We've got multicolored heat shrink tubing. They even gave me a set of MC4s, so not a bad little goodie bag. So we've got a standby draw of 22 watts while sitting idle on, not doing anything, and then an efficiency that I'll run here in a second. 890 over 990, uh, sounds like in the upper 80 percentage. I'll do the math later. So why would you want this? You're packing a lot of capacity into a very small, very inexpensive package. And let me clarify that. This is a 3000 watt inverter with a 60 amp charge controller and a 50 amp AC charger. This is a 3000 watt inverter with a 60 amp charge controller and a $20 or a 20 amp AC charger. So it's even smaller than this. So it combines these three things together 
plus a whole bunch of wiring together into one package that you connect two wires and an AC cord into and you're done. You don't have to spend your afternoon making jumper cords of two or odd gauge cable to connect all this stuff. And it's cheaper. This is $4.99. I have a discount code down below that'll save you 6%. And then there are some other sales happening. So we'll call this $500. I don't know what shipping status is right now. So we'll call it sub $500. This charge controller, which I really like, is 180 bucks. This inverter, which I also really like, is $350. And a 40 amp, 24 volt, AC charger is 180 some odd dollars. So you have $740 worth of stuff, not including the $100 worth of wire that you need to connect this all together in this. So you're saving a ton of money and a ton of work by buying one piece. All you've got to add are one set of DC jumpers and then your AC power cords in and out, which is just a power strip that I cut in half or an extension cord that I cut in half. So you got another $50 worth of parts and you're done. So it is an incredible value for what you're getting for the money. Now you're on a prepper channel, and so preppers are always worried about failures and redundancies and things like that. So why would you choose this route versus this route? And that's a really good question. Well, if one piece on this fails, the whole system goes down. If one piece on this fails, you can spend the money to replace just this one piece. It's the spare tire argument, and I think that is a valid consideration. The price difference is so great, though, that if you were going to go through that school of thought, just buy two of these and leave one in the box, and if it ever fails, pull out the second one. That would be my argument. I like these components individually. I love this MPPT because it's 12, 24, 36, or 48 volts. So if you're someone who likes to tinker like I do, and you're constantly upgrading your system like I do, this gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of capacity to fool around with different voltage configurations and not have to keep buying new equipment. But if you want a one and done, and you're going to leave it alone, this is an amazing, amazing value for what you get. Now you've got to add batteries. You have a couple of different options. So they do make 24 volt batteries. This is a lead time 24 volt 100 amp hour battery, which would be the entry level battery for this inverter system. Don't go any smaller than this. So this is 2,500 watt hours. So this is the bare minimum. And lead time does make larger batteries. They make 24 volt in 200 amp and 24 volt in 280 amp hours in a metal case. They're about $1,500, I believe. So they do exist. You can just buy one battery and then some two gauge cables, connect it, and you're good to go. So you could do this. Or you could do what I've done over here, which is two 12 volt batteries and you put a little jumper right here to put them into series to turn 12 into 24 volts. Now this is my current test rig. These are some leap holes batteries that I tested over the summer. But when I rebuild this, it's going to be with the watt cycle 280 amp mini. And let's take a look at those. To me, this is perfect. This is the best of both worlds. This is the lead time 24 volt inverter with two watt cycle 280 amp hour 
mini batteries in series for 24 volts. So this gives me over 7,000 kilowatts of battery power with a 3,000 watt inverter with a 60 amp MPPT charge controller on a cart that is relatively lightweight and manageable and cost me $1,600 thereabouts. It is easy to move around, it's easy to build, it's you know four wires, so this would be the system that I would recommend that everybody look into if you want big capacity for not a lot of money. Compare what you're getting, the specs on this versus what you're gonna buy something pre-made for and it'll just blow it out of the park. You can't remotely compare. So I've got links down below to the lead time all-in-one with some discount codes and I've got links also for the watt cycle 280 amp hour mini battery also with some discount codes. So check out the specs, see if this works for you, but this is my dream system right here. This is where I really wanna be moving forward Super simple with a huge amount of capacity. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.